Hey everybody, this is part two of the super simple beginner mash recipe. Uh, part one, we made the mash, we set it to ferment. In this video, the ferment is complete. We're going to put it in the still and we're going to run it. Uh, if, you, if you didn't see part one, I suggest you watch it first. I'll put a link in the description or watch this one and then go back and watch the mash. It does, I guess it doesn't matter. Never mind. Uh, so, how I normally do things is I will get my, uh, my wash, which is the mash minus the grains. I've already separated out the grains, so this is just the liquid uh, here, and I'm going to put it in to the still. This is an eight gallon still, so I'll put about six, six and a half gallons in this still. You want to make sure you have plenty of head space. Uh, if you don't, what will end up happening is uh, your, your still will puke. The, the wash inside can bubble up and then those bubbles make it into the column, into the condenser, and then you end up with cloudy moonshine. So make sure you got plenty of headspace. So um, my headspace will be from about right here, including that. So what I do is I get, every, I get my wash inside the, the still. I turn it on so that it can be uh, warming up because it takes a while to get to the right temperature and then I'll start putting the steel together. I'll hook the water pump up for the condenser and I'll check it, make sure it works. I'll go through, I'll check all the, conden all the, uh, all the connections on the condenser, make sure nothing's leaking. I'll do all this while the steel is getting up to temperature because you don't want to be, uh, you don't want to find out that you've got leaks or that the pump doesn't work or anything like that once the steel is at the right temperature and it's producing uh, vapor alcohol uh, or alcohol vapor you don't want to wait until then to find out you've got leaks so that's how i set mine up and i'm going to get on that now and i'll be right back with you oh that smells good we should have a very sour kind of beer smell And people will talk about degassing your wash before you put it in. And um, it's true, you do want it to be kind of degassed. Uh, but I find that first I've separated it from the grains and putting it in these buckets. That creates all the little foamy bubbles. That's degassing. Then I'll pour from these buckets into the steel. Again, creating all these bubbles. And that's degassing also. So... I don't find that it's really necessary to intentionally degas everything because just the process of moving your wash uh, liquid from the mash into a wash and then from the bucket into the steel, all that degassing happens just in the process itself. And I'm not going to get it all in there. That's okay. I'll just put a lid on this. And I'll figure something else to do with it. Okay. I don't have a lighter. I'm gonna have to go get a lighter. You wanna make sure that your seals are all in place good. I don't have uh, I don't have water set up over here at the owl's nest yet, so I had to carry some over, and I used these little five-gallon water jugs to do that. I'm 
and this is just water reservoir for the uh, pump <coughs> circulate water up here in the condenser now I just want to make sure that my connections on my hoses uh, for the water taking the water uh, up into the condenser, back from the condenser, back into the reservoir. I want to make sure I don't have any leaks and I also want to make sure that the pump is working just fine. So while the steel is heating up, I'm going to just plug everything up and make sure it's all working good. And it's just a matter of plugging it in. There's no like on or off switch. It's just plug it in and it should start working. And there it goes. Okay. Pump is working just fine. Let me get my eyeballs on and check those connections. Okay, no leaks. So I can turn the pump back off because I won't need it on for now because I don't have. You don't have to circulate the water in the condenser until there's vapor going through the condenser. And so uh, I can leave that pump off for now and uh, continue getting set up. I want to make sure I got, well, I've got all my jars here over there. Um, I need to make sure all of these tri clamps are good and tight. And uh, I've got an extra bottle of propane here, ready to go. I've got more water. Um, I got plenty of jars. Should be able to see all those jars. I got my Cocoa Joe. And uh, I'm, I think I'm ready to rock and roll. I'll come back to see you guys once this thing is up to temperature and there's something to look at. Okay. About 175 and we've started dripping everything coming off the steel right now is going to get tossed out these are what we call the four shots and first 50 millimeters for every gallon we're going to toss those out I've got about six gallons in the steel so we'll toss out 300 milliliters for the next several hours this is all you'll be doing. This is fun. Basically, you're just babysitting the still. You want to make sure that nothing happens with your pump. Your water keeps flowing through your condensers and stays cold. It's very cold. It'll start to warm up over the course of the run. You may have to change out your water if your reservoir is not large enough or you can add ice to the water. But you want to make sure you keep this condenser cold. With a pot still, like I'm running here, it's actually a column still, but I'm running it like a pot still. There's no packing. I'm not using the reflux. So the only control I really have over what's going on in the still is how much energy I put into the pot. If I want to speed that drip up, I increase the energy, whether I'm using electric or propane. Turn up the heat, speed up the drip. If you want to slow it down, decrease the energy in the pot. That's it. Okay, we got the first jar off the still. Working on the second jar. We're going to go ahead and proof it. Won't focus, will it? Well, okay, it's about 1.30. Now what we'll do is we'll put this back in its jar and we want to let these jars breathe overnight. And we also want to keep track of their position in the run so that you can learn how to make cuts and you can learn Uh, which flavors you like in the run. This is the super simple beginner's recipe. I've done this enough times that I know 
where to make my cuts. I know what I like. I know what the end product is that I like. And so, put a paper towel on the top, and uh, you can mark this jar, or you can just, uh, you know, arrange them in an order that you can keep track of. And so when it comes to uh, your cuts, the only way for you to really learn your cuts is as you make your run, each jar, put a towel over it, let it sit overnight, let it breathe. Uh, stack your jars in such a way that you are, are doing it in chronological order or you're numbering them, putting a one and a two and so on, so that you know where in the run each jar came off the still. And uh, after letting them sit for 24 hours, you can smell them and taste each jar and you'll begin to understand the different flavors um, that come through the steel at different points in time, uh, the heads, the hearts, the tails, and then uh, you'll be able to, after, after you understand that, you'll be able to make your cuts on the fly uh, as the run progresses. So as you make your run, you're collecting in your jars, you're putting a paper towel over, and these are gonna set overnight and you keep them in chronological order so you know which part of the run these came from. And um, you can stop the run whenever you want to stop the run. Um, I suggest you run all the way down to 20% uh, alcohol or so and get a good sense for what, uh, what each part of the run smells and tastes like. And also, there are things we'll get into later that you can do with those tails. And if this super simple beginner mash recipe can be ran as a sour mash, in which case you want to run all the way down through the tails so that your back set that you use in the next run, which would be the sour mash, uh, you want to run most of the alcohol out of that back set. For the sour mash to work well. So we're just about finished with this run and I just wanted to remind you if you didn't catch part one of the super simple beginner mash recipe uh, I'll put a link up right up there and then we're also releasing the easy beginner all grain mash recipe. If you're interested in that I'll put it down on the bottom side. So check those out if you're interested. Talk to you later.